All right, here we are. I want to chat too. Hey, let me chat. Alright folks, welcome back. We got our music. We got a project. We've got a speaker. This speaker is not part of the project, but uh, this is one of those things that I love when it happens. Um, my pal Kung Fu Luke Kelly got in touch with me this week about um, a studio monitor and I told him that I've been wanting to make a studio monitor for a while, uh, some kind of like the mono or a tone type thing that, that you see a lot. And uh, I told him the dimensions and he took some time and made this beautiful oak and poplar uh, speaker for me. And I, I'm, ec I'm ecstatic. This is going to be, this is going to be great. We've got, we've got, I've got two of these. so. Next week, you're going to see and hear uh, this for the music. That'll be the uh, that'll be our music. So, yeah, right. This thing this thing looks great. So, thank you, Luke. Big props. I don't know how I don't know how I could possibly shout you out enough for this. I mean, two of these uh, two of these things on my desk are from Luke. Thank you, Luke. Uh, yeah, Luke's an old pal. Tiger Race is first. I don't think you are first, Tiger Race. I think Casey got you beat this week. All right, that's going to go in the corner for now. And we're going to get to work. Folks, I asked you what you wanted to see this week. And you, not unanimously, but you were all pretty pumped about the Atari synth. So that's what we've got. Forest M MIMS 3 Atari Punk console kit. And uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna cheat a little bit today. I, you know, if you've watched in the past that I like to try to do things on perf board. Actually, this, this needs to go out into the, the mail for Casey. Casey, it's coming. Uh, I just, I don't, I don't have you, I haven't forgotten, but uh, I also haven't mailed it. So, you know, I like to th do things on perf board. Oh, do I show you this monstrosity that I worked on last week? I'll show you half of it. Yeah, you know I prefer to work on perf board because it gives everybody a better sense of what's going on. Uh, however, we're going to work from this little kit only because um, because of our time constraints. We do about an hour and a half uh, on this show. Uh, it's a little it's a little too much to get everything onto a perf board tonight. So next week with the mic pre, I will do that on perf board. And uh, even though even though all the parts would fit on a little uh, chip board like that, a PCB board, we'll do it on a, on a perf board. So uh, the kit is straightforward. You know, I'll, I'll talk us through it. We're not gonna need to read any of this, but we will need this. This is our schematic. So this is based on a timer chip called the 556 timer chip and this is a uh, two timer chips in one package so that's a 14 pin dip which is here the 556 cn so this is going to be probably the first thing we install we'll install that That'll probably be the last thing we install. And you notice I'm not touching the chip. Uh, I really try not to touch the chip 
until I've grounded my hands on something metal, something uh, like a large metal thing. So uh, probably the last thing I do before I pop that in is take a quick second, walk to the bathroom and, or touch my radiator here behind me. Um, but that said, we can see our chip here. And like I said, I'll talk us through. Oh, I made, I made some notes over here so that we would get an idea of what each thing is doing and what's happening. This is a very low parts count, but if we had to jump all of it on the board, it might be kind of a lot. <laughs> Casey says he doesn't believe. I think Casey uh, says, I don't believe you're gonna send out this perf board. I will, I'm gonna send it. I'm only, I'm not quite a week late. Okay, I'm gonna get to work. Isabel says, hey, how are you, Uncle Frank? Isabel, nice to hear from you. Hope you're doing well. Got quite a crew going tonight. Well, let me just pop these over here like this. And I'll show you what I've got going here. So this came as a box, just a, a regular box, a plastic box. I don't love these plastic boxes. Um, for the main reason that they don't have any shielding. This came as just a straight plastic box, no holes. So the instructions say this thing would take about um, a half hour to an hour to assemble. That is being extremely generous because I probably have a solid two hours of machining this um, plastic just to get the pots and the switch installed and then I mean, I'm, I'm doing this stuff a little bit uh, finicky because I wanted the holes countersunk, so I countersunk some holes to fit the speaker. And I drilled a bunch of holes for the speaker in a pattern. That took a bit of time, but still, you would still need to drill holes for a speaker. You still need to drill holes for offset uh, standoffs. And you would also have to drill holes for the pots, which we have here, the controls. Um, I pre-wired the controls just to make it easier for tonight, but it's pretty obvious and straightforward what I did. Same thing with the switch. It's just a SP, ST, single pull, single throw, on, off switch. So when it's on, it's on. When it's off, it's off. Just two wires coming off that. So a, uh, a hot, a, a mix, uh, you know, a straight mix, um, another hot and a, and a ground. So that's all I did there. And I glued in a little battery clip just to save us a tiny bit of time tonight. And I'm gonna go ahead and get cracking. It's our little parts bag. I believe we're only gonna need one of each of these. I think this is a, a pretty straightforward kit. This is a ceramic capacitor. I might refer to the instructions in a moment um, because, so this is a, Ceramic 103, I believe that is a 0.01. I think we only need one of those. And I believe this is a 10 microfarad cap. I believe this is 10 at 50 volts. So they send you 10 of these in this little kit. This is a, a, a Jamco kit. 10 microfarad at 50 volts. This is a tantalum cap, and it is, let's see if we can get it. No, not gonna be able to see it, but that's okay. There's only one of those, some screws for the hardware. And then again, I think we only need one resistor for this kit. And these are all, I believe these are either 100 or 1K. Looks like brown, black, red. I think that's 100 ohms. And I don't think we're using these because this would have been for the pots. A speaker. And let's see, it's almost a half watt speaker. Cool. 
some hookup wire, which I have, I think I took care of most of the hookup wire for this so far. Uh, you can see I, I added some pigtails to this. Bell says, I'm a Michigan with that, Rachel, and we're all watching well. Hey, everybody. Uh, hope you enjoy the show. Let's see, what else is going on here? Why don't we start by putting our socket in and we'll get that soldered real quick. So you can see that there's a notch on these sockets and that corresponds to uh, the top end of the chip. So that's going to go in there. So that means that's going to be pin one right here. Pin one is always the upper left hand pin of the chip. That's how we would read the chip. Okay. So we're going to set that in and I'm going to set it down and solder this. I'm not going to bend any of these pins. Um, set this way down here and it needs to just gently sit on something. Yeah, I can sit on here. And I'll just tack this in. Start with pin one, just a quick pin one, and then I believe that's going to be pin eight. So those two should hold it in place nicely. Not too much solder. Feel pretty good about those. Bell says, sorry about tackling you. Still sorry about tackling me. That's true. Uh, the last time I saw Bell as we were hugging goodbye, uh, I was standing precariously and she gave me a running hug and I fell flat on my back. No problem. Didn't worry about it then, not worried about it now. All right, I guess wouldn't be Tech Tuesday without some serious knob considerations. We've got several. So these are the knobs that came with the kit. We could put these knobs on there, but I think it would be more interesting if you chose the knobs we were gonna put on. We could put on those or these. So, A or B, you choose. In the comments, tell me what you think. Luke says, sounds like a clean hit. Yeah, she, she got me right off guard. It was, uh, it was a good time. All right. Let's populate our board. Generally, when you're working on a kit like this, you'll populate your board, and then you will solder everything before installing it into... Uh, your console. Um, so to be a little more specific about this project, this is an Atari style synth. It's going to um, have two controls and a volume control. And I believe one changes the oscillation of the control and one changes the cutoff. I could be wrong about that. I have to double check the um, instruction, but, and then one is gonna be the volume. You'll see where that goes but uh, it is gonna be a, a very lo-fi sounding kit and I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. All right, let's populate. So we're looking at BT1, that's gonna be battery one, C1, capacitor one, C2, capacitor two, C3, capacitor three. S1 is switch one, R2, resistor two, and then we've got resistor one, 
two, three here. So you can see these are shaped like um, potentiometers that indicates that those are where the, the pots are gonna go. And the speaker. So anything that wouldn't fit on this board, like you can see that the speaker obviously wouldn't fit on the board. Some speakers would, this one will not. Anything that has two, hole, two uh, holes like that is gonna get flying leads like this. So um, as we populate these for final, final assembly, you know, one of these will go straight in, get soldered on the backside. So that's how that works. Be ready for it. We've got already some votes going. We've got an A, we've got a B, and we've got a C. We don't have a C yet. Maybe Casey knows something I don't. Uh, I mean, I do have, I do have a few other little, I don't think, I don't think I have anything else that's gonna fit. This is still gonna be option B. So keep the votes coming, we're, we're, we're gonna come back to them. Okay. Let's populate. So generally as I'm populating, you can choose how you want to install your components. Ooh, that one's a tight fit. Yep, that is a tight fit. Uh, I might have to sand that down just a hair. Ooh, yep, so let me, let me pull one side of this down. There's no reason that one side should work and the other side shouldn't. Let me try a different, a different resistor. There's some contention about the knobs happening. Which ones have indicators or not? All right, let's try this again. Nope, that's just a slightly tiny hole. So let me let me sand that down just a hair. This might this might take enough off. Look at this. Issues already on the first component. So I will say that if you you could probably put this whole thing together um, in about 30 minutes if you didn't have a case to contend with. But the case will always um, take a little extra time. Let's see if that helped. Not quite. All right, we'll come back to that. So C1 and C2, one of these is uh, tantalum and the other is ceramic. I'm gonna go with easy number C3. And uh, you'll notice C3 is polarized. Um, a lot of caps are, some are not. So these all show a polarity. Um, the ceramic cap wouldn't have a polarity. The tantalum cap might have a polarity. And I'll double check to see which one should be which. But you see here, we have a negative stripe on ele aluminum electrolytic. That's generally how they're in, uh, marked. There's an indicator for negative, generally not for positive. So, and for example, the opposite of what I just did. Okay, so positive, negative. Pull that to one side to keep it in place. Pull that to the other direction to keep it in place. And then we'll snip that in a few minutes. 
Okay, let's find out what should be the tantalum cat. C2 is the tantalum cat. So let's talk a little bit about caps. So inside these caps um, is a metal element and some sort of dielectric element. And they each have different sounds. Um, one is going to, I mean, we could talk generally about how they sound, but uh, one will be brighter than the other. Generally, people would consider ceramic caps to be very bright, but people would also say tantalum caps are also very bright. They might be bright in slightly different ways. That's a little different than, where'd my cap box go? An old aluminum cap, which would be paper, oil, wax, and aluminum, and that will have a smoother sound. So um, something to consider if you're designing electronics, what's going to go where? I'm going to use ceramic, like that, aluminum, paper, oil, like that, ceramic, tantalum, and sometimes you don't really have a choice. One will only do the job that it can do. So we said C2 is tantalum. Let's see if we can pull this off. Kung Fu Crime Wave says, why isn't the synth box made of wood? That's a good question. Uh, why isn't it made of wood? I don't think either of us has time to be making synth boxes out of wood, but perhaps, perhaps one of us does have time. Okay. So we're going to look for the positive So now we can see that one side of this is positive and the other is negative. I'm going to mark this so that I know which side is negative so that I can see it from a distance. Just going to give it a black stripe. That means negative because that is extremely hard to read from a distance. Okay, so positive is going to go in here. Just like that. We're going to give it a little, a little room. And then we're going to fold the back like that. Maybe we go slightly different directions. Keep it away from those pins. All right. That leaves C1. The dollar store. Uh, yep, always a good source of cheap wood boxes. I've purchased a few boxes at Michael's too. Uh, most craft stores do have like a um, a reasonable like wood box section. They're they're doable. You can, you can find them. Uh, so I said earlier that um, that I don't love plastic boxes. They machine really easily, and I do like that. And they do have a nice look. So um, some things like this are probably fine. It's it doesn't offer shielding, which is something. I like in an aluminum or um, or other box. So, for example, we'll, we'll come back to this in one second. Let's talk a little bit about, about shielding. Uh, if you've been here in a f in weeks past, uh, you've seen these uh, isolation isolation boxes I've been working on, and uh, they're essentially. Uh, bass or guitar DIs, and I, I put them in a an aluminum enclosure, and you have to do a few things. One thing is you have to make sure all the parts 
are going to make conductive contact to each other. So for example, you can see that I ground away uh, some of the powder coat here so that when you screw these together, they'll make good conductive contact inside. Now the finished product, I would be remiss if I didn't show you. This little uh, DI box that I made has an attenuator, has a ground lift, uh, some high Z inputs, some low Z output. That's a, an input and a through. Um, and this is essentially just a uh, step up or a step down transformer, however you want to look at it, inside with an attenuator and um, an SP, ST switch. So uh, I'll have more on this later. You saw me making this one if you were here a few weeks ago. I think this was my second show. So same thing. Um, why don't we look inside? There's no time, no time like the present. We'll come back to that. We've got, we've got a few minutes. I can show you what I'm talking about. So again, made, this is steel, slightly different. I ground away some powder coat. Ground away some powder coat here, if it'll focus. Uh, transformer, switch, attenuator circuit, ground. You remember this. All right. Back to work. C1, so we'll also, we'll come back and talk about what we're doing here in regards to the schematic, because I want us to see what's happening as we're working. So those are our main components here. So what have we done? So we have C1, two pins, two, so that's the threshold, and it's headed over to C2, which comes into the other threshold. So. This is going to be uh, part of the circuit that like opens up this um, this gate essentially, and then we have C three, which is going to be our, that that'll be our output. Uh, which well, let's look. Let's see where C three heads. C three is on the. output. And then the resistors are going to pin four, one, two, three, four, the reset. And the other resistor is going to, let's see where R3 is headed. R3 on the switch, that's the on off. And that is headed to The discharge, which is also connected to the output. No, excuse me, the reset. So they're pretty interactive between the threshold, the reset, and the trigger. All right. 
Let's see if we can get this to... I'm going to cut this at an, at an angle and see if I can't get one side of this through. I wasn't able to scrub away any... I think this hole is just plated a little too... too thick. It's going in about half a millimeter. One side's going in all the way. So, maybe if I spin it... Oh, there it goes. Okay, great. So, we could keep this upright or we could pull it down. I'm going to pull it down. Can anybody hear the music? Is it loud enough? Should be louder. I would lead bend, bend a lead on this. Maybe I'll, I'll straighten it out on the top here. I try not to pull too hard from the bottom, but there we go. Okay, that's close enough for me. I don't always load components right on the board because I feel like it doesn't give you enough time to make uh, a lasting solder joint. Okay, I'm going to solder these all together, and then we'll get to setting the flying leads, and we're already 30 minutes in. Let's see where this leaves us. if we can delve. R1 controls the frequency of the audio oscillator. R2 controls the output pulse duration of the monostable multivibrator. R4 is the volume control. So there you have it. R1 controls the frequency of the audio oscillator. R2 controls the output pulse duration of the monostable multivibrator. Easy, right? Props to Kung Fu Luke here. I haven't had one of these uh, third hand devices in, in so long that I actually can't remember if I even owned one or not. I think I had one in my, in my teens. I think we'll need the, the magnifying glass. Will you be able to see it with the magnifying glass? Yeah, okay. No, we're not going to need it, but we, I will zoom in. Because this is what you came for. I know why you're here. You are here for the soldering close-ups. And I'm ready. I'm ready for you. I got you covered. All right. Start at the back side. We... we Shock our iron tip. Ooh. Not quite hot enough. Let's see. Let's do another. That's a little better. 
Now this is our electrolytic cap. I don't want to. I don't want to go too long on this one. This one's going to be a little. There we go. That's enough. And I'm going to wait to do the other side because electrolytic caps are very sensitive to heat. So I'm going to come up here and do this one. Caps in general are pretty sensitive to heat, so I'm going to let that one sit for a second too. Check our first joint here. Hard to tell if that one's... Yeah, okay, that one's good. These are all pretty solid. Nothing's moving. I've got two left. This tip is just a little too big for these. So I'm not trying to put too much solder on there. Now we'll check. All right, all pretty solid. Now I can snip these away. All right. I'll zoom out for that. This is the new, uh, this is actually a test of that, of the transformer. I'll turn this up. New music this week. So, pro tip, sometimes if you have a nice long lead left over, you could save it and resistor leads make excellent jumpers. So if you ever need a little jumper, that's a, a, a nice wire. I'm not saying save every little scrap, but if you have a long one, you'll be surprised. It could come in handy. Sometimes too, if I have a short um, pin that I'm cutting off, I put my thumb over, thumb or finger on top so it doesn't snap off. Fly up into your eye or across the room, you never see it again. So that's that. All right. I'll solder these. Other pins, our socket pins. This is going to be a trick right here with this big bulky tip I've got. Cheap breadboard jumpers break too. Oh yeah, uh, right. If you if you think to order bread, breadboard jumpers, uh, they do. They have a little insulator. They look like basically. They look kind of like, uh, like this, except uh, it wouldn't be a resistor. It would just be some insulation on the wire. It's a good tip. All right, so let's see. Let's get in here real close, real quick. Just a lump. This is where this thin solder comes in very handy. Uh, this is the moment that I'm glad about this thin, thinner solder. I've had thicker solder in the past and I really do like it for most things, but this thin wire, this thin solder, that one looks a little, a little gray. So I can tell my tip needs to be cleaned. See that it's getting a little funny. So shock it on your sponge. We're back to shiny silver. Oh, this is another new song. Uh, this is a song idea I've been working on. This is just the riff. And I think this also came out of some 
transform our work. And that's over, obviously. Okay. Now I'll let you check my work. I'm gonna say, I'm pretty proud of these. No dry joints, just enough solder. Everything looks pretty good. Soldered onto the pads pretty well. Uh, this could use a trim. I don't know if I even have clippers thin enough to, to trim that. Pretty close. All right, so let's see if I made a mistake by inserting those pots into the case already. Okay, there's the top half of our board. This is going to have to sit like this, so I'll just solder these one at a time. I'm going to use this here. This goes like this. So one of these is the output. That's the 5K, and we know that R4 is the volume control here, so I'm going to label that for us right now. I put the 5K in this position, so this should be... I'm just going to put a little four on that like that. So we know that's the output. These are both one meg pots. And let's see. Let's zoom in a bit. So R4 is going to have to go over here like this. Is it going to fit? Barely, I don't think so. We're gonna switch it. Oop. We're gonna switch it right now. So that was my ideal location. I like I like having um, outputs or master volumes. Um, all the way on the right hand side of a faceplate, but we could also have it all the way on the left hand side. I think it doesn't make as much sense to have a volume control in the middle of a batch of knobs. I don't mind having it on the end. No output jack for this, just the speaker. You know, I, I did go back and forth uh, thinking about whether or not to just install an output jack, and I do have one handy, but um, I think the speaker is gonna add this really tinny element that uh, is gonna be a lot of fun. So I figure after this is done, I will put, um, I'll put a jack on on the back of this but for now I'm gonna stick with the speaker because I think it's gonna I think it's gonna sound pretty cool now will this thread oh it might not thread I 
at that. So I ground out some material from the backside, but for some reason. are not handy. Yeah, this is just barely stick around up just a little more. The only time I don't put volume first is if I'm doing a gain channel or an amp. Oh, okay, right. So that's another thing that I, I generally think of. First knob is usually uh, gain and then usually some variable like uh, tone or uh, and then usually it's another a master volume at, at this end. So I like to think of, since I'm, I've kind of come up working on amps, well, hmm, this is going to be, this is going to give me trouble here. So yeah, I generally do like to think of, let's pull this out. of these as the gain and the, the volume, but all right, I guess that was it. Snap that little tab out. Okay. Crisis averted. So. Pan one is going to be our square. That the blue, I should do these from the top. Such a trick! I might do these one at a time. So, this is going to be R1 because this is our volume. This is some very thin hookup wire. A little thinner than what I'm, what I prefer. Uh, but they sent all black pickup wire or hookup wire. I'm gonna do these one at a time because I just don't think they're gonna stay. They sent all black, and I hate working with all of one color of wire. Uh, it just gets too confusing. I'm gonna thank Casey again for sending me this music. These are his compositions. Uh, Casey is a composer, engineer, and overall talented musician. Uh, and you can check out his music at caseyholford.com. Is that right, Casey? I think I got that exactly right. Um, I've been to, to your website a number of times, but I can't remember exactly if that's the, the website. It just occurred to me to... Uh, to drop it on the air here. Okay. Oh, of course. And in doing so, I pinned this room. Something new this week, just for moments like this, where I made a, a sweet little mistake. I got my solder sucker back. I had one of these a long time ago, and It, I just, I used it up, and now I decided, hey, it's time to have a solder sucker again. Oop. But they're very, especially on stuff like this, they, uh, I 
camera. I have to do this off camera. It's, it happens so quick. You pretty much have to do it from one side. solder everywhere. Okay, blue is going to go on number one, yellow is going to go on number two. is very thin. It'll take us the rest of the hour just to hook these up. Maybe I'll try this from the top. I'll give it I'll give it a dab on the top to hold it. We'll tack it in place. as I work. I coined a phrase a few weeks ago uh, when you're working on cables, and especially with thin wiring, you don't want any strays or frays. So I saw a little fray wire, a little stray wire, and I'm going to get rid of it. Sometimes you need to trim them away with a little tiny pair of scissors. new tips for my iron. I promise I'll put it on next week, but ever since I bent this tip, I've been having some uh, some good luck with some joints because I'm getting a certain angle that I like to work at, so I've been reluctant to change the tip. Right, let's get this last one set in here. Just a little bit. Okay. This one's going to be a little tricky because it's thicker. I can tell. Not going to want to go in as well. Tight as I can. I wonder how many wire ends I've twisted in my life. Probably just a few less than joints I've soldered. All right. Do I like solder wick? I do like solder wick. Um, in fact, I have one. I usually keep it on my desk here. And that's what I've been using for the last few years. Um, I got turned on to solder wicks. 
a few years ago uh, when my um, solder sucker died and um, solder can, can give a very clean um, clean joint especially for a repair but in moments like that with a, a, a pad trace sometimes it can lead to a little bit of trouble so um, I do like to use both but I do like a, a good solder wick. Solder wick is essentially basically a nice clean braid of copper that will pull solder with it when you heat it up. So we're gonna touch these up on the back side here. Make sure they're set. Good there. Those other two look fine. I'm going to clean them up though, because as you can see, Got trouble right there. I'm going to trim these with some fine scissors that I have. Intricate. These are like uh, vinyl cutting scissors. I can put some uh, pinstriping tape on them. Okay, that should be fine. Oh, I've got a couple more here. There we go. That one should be fine. That's gone. I'm not worried about that one. It's not gonna magically move over. All right, one down, two to go. So R4 is going to be on the end. R3 in the middle here. This is going to be a trick. Here, R3. Okay. Let's do the ground first on this one because the ground wire is a little stronger. I think it's gonna it's gonna help us overall. This is where things get a little dicey here because we can't move these wires too much. You only get a couple a couple movements out of these wires, so that went in nicely. Uh, you'll notice also, I spent some time this afternoon stripping wires because wire stripping is extremely time consuming. It's like, I find it to be one of the more tedious uh, parts of electronics projects. Even with wire strippers, it tends to be Tedious. So I stripped these wires before I ever thought about turning that camera on. So that should hold that in place. So the other thing is, I generally, I do a few things by feel. I try not to move too much. Well, as I was saying that, uh, the wire fell out. But um, I was saying that I 
try not to always look at what I'm doing if I know that I can do it on the on the other side of the board without having to see it. So, for example, that goes in. I just fold it down or up. I'm going to hold it. And I'm going to solder it. I'm going to straighten it first though so I don't get any weird side business happening. No strays, no phrase. Uh, how about everybody? Has anyone been working on any electronics projects recently? Uh, I haven't been here for two full weeks. I was here uh, 14 days ago. It's the last time we all chatted. Okay, this one's going to be a trick. So really, I can't stress enough. Get those tire t wires twisted as well as you can because it will cause you so much headache down the road if you don't. Yeah, uh, tiny little frayed wires are a huge, uh, huge source of headache for hobbyists and ele electronic technicians. One little stray wire can cause so much trouble. It can cause a, a de an entire device or network not to work properly, and you're basically looking for a problem. It, and it happens to be this tiny little hair strand of wire. So those three are in. Another thing you could do is just cut them to the proper length before you strip them to the proper length. That never hurts. I guess if I'm giving advice, I'll just keep giving advice. Alright, projects. Doing Star Quad Frank style, yeah. Uh, we've talked about cables, light a bong. I'm currently building from scratch a dual channel solid state guitar amp with reverb, trying my hand at my own design. Oh, great, that's that's good to hear. Um, I've done uh, I've done a number of clones, but I generally I tend not to uh, design amps from scratch either. I either want a particular amp or somebody else wants it, so. Uh, I would say I tend to work from what already works. So congrats, that's great. Okay, we're gonna work. Maybe I'll try these from the top for R4. We're getting there, we're almost there. We are at 8.35. Ooh, we're coming down to it, aren't we? I'm gonna do this method of um, Ground first. That seemed to work pretty well. I'll give it a nice little bend. And this is that, these are those moments that are like, you just, you have very little movement because too much movement, you're gonna start breaking wires. I'm not even going to flip that over. This is going to be from the top. Nice, clean. Did it go under? Yep, there it goes. 
thankfully these are um, padded on both sides so I'll double check the bottom but it looks like I got a good yeah I got a good joint on there okay maybe I will trim this one a little bit this one looks a little long I'll trim it first I'll take my own advice is that a thing anyone has ever done taking their own advice back to haunt me trimming those I don't think so I think it was the right call oh, of course I think I'm doing the right thing let's just bend this down a little bit Also tied these these uh, wires together. I feel like that has been helpful actually, but I also think it's adding a little resistance, which is a little uh, a little tricky. I feel like this is going to bounce right out as I solder it. I wonder if it will. I'm gonna I'm gonna bet that it will. Yeah, one or two. It tried really hard. All right. And, oh. Sometimes uh, you can also tape a wire down if you're having an issue. That's a nice, a nice way to um, problem solve. Have a little piece of tape. Uh, I have tape on hand all the time just to do stuff like this. You need it to sit in there, put some tape on it. So that can, that's a good problem solver as well. All right, folks, we're coming close. Oop, don't touch the cap. getting there. We need to wear our switch. We need to install and wear our speaker. We need to bolt this puppy down. Okay. We have some hardware for that. I'm just going to do one of these screws. We'll come back to the other one. I'll do that off camera sometime. Coming close on the on the length there. I have to bend that down actually. Um, one of my pet peeves of my own work, and uh, it's something I've been trying to to be more um, conscious of, is neat wiring. Um, in the past, I've had some some questionable wiring practices, and sometimes if I go back and look at a an old amp or something that I've made. It makes me a little sad if the wiring is uh, untidy, and I'll, I'll end up going back to to resolder it anyway, to rewire it. All right, I'm doing the switch, folding these back, and then I will. Yeah, that's that's solid enough that it'll take a joint. Right. Uh, 
You know, someone asked last week, what temperature do I like for my iron? And you know, it, it does depend. Today I'm working at about 325, I would say roughly 325 on this iron. I don't know how that, what that's coming out to be. I bet it's about 38 watts or something like that. If I'm making cables or using, like soldering a lot of heavy uh, braids, I will do heavier, uh, I will do um, hotter, hotter temps. So for example, if I'm working on a braid, you know, a thick, heavy copper braid, I like to trim it as, as close as I can. I don't wanna be working with a huge braid, um, but I will use a slightly hotter temperature. So maybe like 350 or something like that. You know, it's a trade-off because you don't want it to melt anything. You don't want to melt the insulator. Uh, you know, everything's like ebb and flow. Okay, we're pretty close. Uh, we have a battery to wire in. Let's do that. So, like I said, I chose to, I chose to mount these pots first because I, I just knew that I wouldn't have time to do it on camera. Uh, generally, I would mount them last. I would make, and if you've seen my videos before, you know that I, I will generally make this Frankenstein beast that will sort of uh, be flopping around. I didn't want that in this case um, because I know these wires are super thin and there's just not very much time to uh, to get everything installed. So I think I worked my way around it. Thankfully, some of these are working pretty well from the top side. modeling gray soldering behavior on that joint, but I would usually go back and clean my solder tip. And I noticed the difference. It's slightly, it's slightly less shiny because some of the flux came off before, uh, before I was done soldering. All right, we're almost there. We are almost through our playlist as well. Can we hear this song? I don't think so. This is a real work tune. Time to get to work. All right, here's the speaker. So this is a weird speaker. I'm trying to figure out what this speaker is exactly because it's a, it's like an aluminum or a, a tin diaphragm and then it has some holes on the back. So I'm curious if it's like a buzzer, uh, kind of like a one of those piezo elements and, or if there's something behind it, like a piece of plastic, I doubt it. It's probably is this, uh, probably just this tin or whatever. Okay, I think we can go this direction to install this battery. We'll come back to that. And then a hot and a cold on the battery. For Cranway, uh, Cranway asks, what are the dimensions of a 9 volt battery? Good question. Let's find out right now. Let's find out right now. Uh, we're looking at about 1 and 7 eighths by 1. So from One fifteen sixteenths, one seven eighths. Yeah, one seven eighths. That's good. All right. Don't let me forget to layer this up. 
folks, we're in the home stretch. This really is close. With any luck, none of my wires will break. None of these questionably thin hookup wires that I chose. Like I said, uh, the kit, this kit came with some thicker wire, but it was all black. So I chose some wire that I had on hand. This is like some very thin, I counted the strands even because I was like, well, is this gonna work or not? These are seven, seven stranded, seven little copper strands. I'm gonna give this a little extra leverage here. angle in here. All right. 24 aug. Yeah, I bet it is probably 24. Um, could be 20 two or 24 is pretty thin or 24 gauge I should say One. right through the insulation great I saw it go under wick under it's two not bad all right this is the time this is the moment for you all to take bets whether this whether or not this thing's gonna work. Uh, I know in its current state, for two reasons it's not gonna work. First and foremost, there's no battery in there. And uh, if you were watching a couple weeks ago, you saw me get all the way through a fuzz pedal and I had forgotten maybe the most important thing Battery here, we'll come back to that. But we haven't installed our chip. So give me one second, I'm gonna ground out my, my hand, my body, and I'll be right back. grounded in uh, in a lot of ways I guess before we do that let's get this mounted this is gonna be a little trick because it's a tiny screw I got big hands who knows? Who knows what's gonna happen? I know it's not gonna look great on camera, I can tell you that. All right, we're close. All right. So that's that. leave myself room to install this chip let's just say sure I'm not I'm not exactly positive I did but let's just say that I did chip is here so again um, the reason I grounded myself on the radiator is that uh, you don't want to touch these pins uh, on their side really when you hold the chip you want to hold it from the from the end to end Chips are static sensitive. You might touch a chip and it might not give you problems right away, but it might give you problems later. Ooh, this is, this is gonna be a beast. Coming from the back here. I'm gonna set it down. So then 
issue is if you do happen to touch the pins and you're grounded, at least you know you're kind of safe. So I'm gonna set this. Can you get a better angle on this? I usually go for one side first and not I'm not gonna push it like way into one side because it'll bend the pins. These pins bend, bend very easily. Sometimes I do I'll install a chip like this too. Oh, and I'm, I'm trying to install it backward, of course. Don't let me do that. Nobody warned me. So uh, here's what I meant by backward. See, there's the little U. And here's the corresponding Seven minutes. Am I going to make it? Why don't I set this down? I was going for the higher resolution, but worst case scenario, I'll. I'll uh uninstall the board and install it. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. Let's just get this out of the way. Take out the pot. Stop fart fart harsing around. Yeah, actually that's where I'm at right now. Taking out this pot. Alright. But remember those those are so thin. Alright, now watch. It's gonna go right in. Sides in. Nice and straight. I'm gonna I see one side bent out. So another thing that kind of happens is all the pins, you can kind of see. The pins are all slanted outward they are slightly wider than that. So you, you generally are putting in one side first and pushing the other side in. Gently. It's a trick. Yeah, I wouldn't have got this in with that pot. Sometimes you have to, I'm going to modify this little, push them all in at once, it should go right in. they make a chip installer for this very thing. There it is. Okay. Just push on top. Get this pot back in there. If it'll go back in. Again, this uh, this bad little cabinet 
giving me trouble all day. Use a hammer. Dual 555. Alright, I think that's it. Which way is our switch installed? Is it installed correctly or is it installed upside down? We'll find out in a second. As soon as I install that battery. Ready for the reveal? Turn that down. Actually, before I do anything else, let's get the speaker secured. This is a nail biter. Yeah, we're we're coming close. Three minutes. You know, actually, this is how the this is how it usually works. This is what usually happens. We come into the five minute mark, and it's either working or it's not. Ooh, so. Either it's not working, or it's not turned on. Any luck? Nothing yet. Uh-oh. I don't hear anything. Okay, do we have time to troubleshoot? Let's take a look. Let's see what's going on. What's going on here? Something happening here? Let's check all of our connections. Sometimes it helps to, to prod a little with a, a wood pick. This is all low voltage, so I'm not too worried about getting a shock on this. There it is. I'm guessing it was that. Whew, now that, that is it. Trouble, shot, trouble shot. All right, folks. That was the battery, I guarantee. Oh, this is exciting. Okay. Oh, we haven't put an ops on yet. What, what are we even doing? What did we decide? Luke, tally up those volts. What, what do we got going on here? I mean, we are exactly at nine o'clock. I might have to just make the decision. We got an A, I heard A, B, and C. I'm looking, I see A, I see B, I see C. It's, it's one for one. I'm going to have to make the decision. Well, I've been in a very retro phase lately. So maybe we're going to go modern. Why don't we do these kind of 80s, since this is an 80s cheesy uh, synth, we're going to go 80, 80s cheesy knobs. Oof. I thought for a second it wasn't going to work. Just for a second. So don't forget, next week we're going to do a Microphone preamp. Oh, that's way down there. Man, I'm burning precious time. I hope YouTube doesn't shut me off right at nine. Yeah, we got a second. All right, there we go. Knobs installed. Trouble shot. Fixed. Yes. Maybe our volume knob's having trouble here. 
It's not giving us much. I'm going to set this right down next to it. Anybody feel like they're playing pole position? Yeah, cool. There's a sweet spot in here. Haha, <laughs> take that. Totally. Definitely need to learn that. That is that is pole position. Or uh, what was that tank game? Anybody better know what that tank game was? I could sit here all night and do that. Um, I could sit here all night and do that, but I'm not going to because we've been on air for an hour and 34 minutes. This is our longest segment yet. I guess I'll just have to figure out something to do with these cool knobs for next week. Spoiler, it's a mic preamp and uh, it's going to be cool. So thanks everybody for hanging out. Uh, it is just like Pink Floyd in here. Some cool old synths. I'm gonna... I, I really, I could just do this. All right, folks. Thanks again. There was trouble. It was shot. It was unfixed. Now it's fixed. Thanks, everybody, for, for uh, dropping in. I will see you next week, Tuesday, 7.30. It's going to be fun. Hang out. All right. Bye, y'all. Fixed. 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 <laughs> <laughs>